Catholic, for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. business. Um, it's all right. All right we'll, we'll jump to Mrs. Johnson. I need to be in any particular place just so you can hear me. Uh, just state your name for the record and as long as you can project. Oh, okay. <laughs> I've got, always been told I have a biz now so I think I can project how that be. I'm Linda Johnson with Guardian Advocates Incorporated the West Division. We have uh, been here times before and really appreciate your support in the past and are looking for your support again this year. Uh, Shada, as well as myself, started to pass out my letter of intent to give you some numbers. Um, again, to remind everyone and anyone that might be new, we are the Vagia program, our volunteer advocates for seniors and incapacitated adults, which is liken it to the CASA program for children. We have the children at heart and we love them. We have continued to grow. We are now entering our seventh year for 2024. We've had a 20% increase this past year overall. And for Fulton County, you remain 8%. I think that's what you were last year. I can't, I wouldn't say for certain, but you are 8% of our client referral base of the five counties. And we continue to grow there. We currently uh, when we stake our numbers in the ground about July 1st, we do that from year to year so we can compare apples to apples and see our growth. And if you will, on the chart there, uh, so I can squish it on one page, the numbers to the left are last year's numbers, numbers to the right are this year's numbers. So we have uh, six appointed living clients. We had one death this year. We've helped and completed six. And as you can see, we had 15 uh, referrals. That's 8% of our base. In case you're interested, 93% of the clients are of a mental health type issue, um, which correlates to our incapacitation definition and guidelines from the Indiana Supreme Court. We have at least two cases pending. Life Care Center has become friends with us and we've been helping them right along. We would ask if you would please to come, come along with us again this year and support us. Our ask for the last, I think, three years have been $5,000. We will again ask that this year. Uh, I'll make some clarifications. Our budget is up over 236000 projected for next year. If you take that, and I know Mayor Denton, among many, have asked me, well, how do you come up with the numbers? How much does it cost per person? I can't tell you that because every person's needs are different and very time consuming to very very, very time consuming. But what I can do, now that we have a few years experience and, and some statistics, I can take 8% of that budget of 236,000. 8% of that, if you will, is 18,884. If you want to think of it in those terms, 8% of the client base, sharing 8% of the cost to mirror that, for Fulton County would be $18,880 that we would need in support. We have three, what I call major donors, that come along with the $5,000 or so dollars. 
Um, you folks as a council with the mayor, the county commissioners, the county council together, and then Indiana, or pardon me, Northern Indiana Community Foundation, Laura, uh, Clarine Lucas out there and the whole group has been great to support us. Um, we continue with that request this year. Now, if you take that $18,000 and divide it by three, that's roughly $6,000. So we're, we're close to being target on. Um, however, unfortunately, the Supreme Court or the Indiana Office of Court Services leadership that we have keeps reminding us that their pot for the grant that's a two to one match is dwindling. And they have projected by 2025 that there may not be hardly any funds left. That has been a grant that we could ask for 75,000 as long as we have the two to one match. The last two years we've been awarded 50,000. That's been in due part to some roller, rollover that we've had because we've looked for people to hire and we weren't able, of course we explain all that in the grant. This year we will not have any rollover. Uh, however, I anticipate, I hope by the end of the year, I've stuck enough pennies back that we can start an endowment for our five counties and let that start maturing. Um, I am starting to broaden, have worked all along to broaden to other donor bases. They're small, uh, are what I would consider the next step, if you want to say down or up, from you folks, might be our providers hospitals, which we've asked all along for support. Um, some of our other partners, the group homes, the nursing homes, and they come in anywhere from 500 to 2,500. So it's a slow process to build that uh, up, but we, we keep looking. I keep looking for more and more grants to write every year. We have had more staff. We've kind of um, come along because we're sharing with the East. That was the whole, one of the concepts of merging with our sister program so we could share like our accounting manager, myself, our CEO, the three of us are paid 50-50, a little bit at, because I, I retired, right? And I'm still here. So I don't work very many hours. But um, what we do work of, a, of those three, we are shared in income with um, the East Division. So that helps defer the cost. Um, we look to hire another case manager, and we look to hire and share between the two divisions a volunteer manager. The volunteers supporting our program, being participative, and being the advocate for our clients is a big deal. Uh, it's what we're all about advocating. So we need those hands to help us. Again, that person will be is uh, will be shared 50/50 with the East Division and cover all eight counties. So that's kind of what's planned. We're trying to hit the growth and hit what our needs and yet try to keep the cost down. I hope to put out an update thing in the first quarter instead of second quarter this next year and let you all have a heads up. If it looks like we're gonna to have to increase our ask next year, I hope not. Uh, but maybe not as much here as the other counties that share a larger percentage of our base. Um, there we may have to ask for some increases. But I would ask that you come along with us again this year at $5,000. And I appreciate your support and your time. Thank you for letting me be here. Are there any questions I can answer? It's worked very well to be with our sister program this year. Uh, it was a lot of hard work getting at the end of the last, but uh, it, is, it has helped immensely. questions then I thank you. Thank you Shada. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you Shada. One thing I did, I don't know to help you if you want to use it, if they want to take a vote tonight. That's just a real short pledge letter that you could <clears throat> they could sign and I could take one back with me tonight and you don't have to send me one. That's up to you and the group. Some of them have been asking me to do that to make it easier. Sure. So, it's a quicker form. Yeah. I don't remember discussing it. Well, I brought it up. It was in the list because we have this uh, organizations, this one's water bomb, shelter, food center, and all of it was kind of grouped in the whole
and, and I will be there, I will be coming with you guys. I, yeah. I love that. I know you do. I love that. Well, and actually there will be an additional appropriation coming for this year and uh, next month. So, but this I believe Linda correct, correct me if I'm wrong. This is for 24, not okay. for 23. Correct for 24. We wouldn't need funds until after the first of the year. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, as far as 24, we should be, we'd be able to support yeah. it. Because that's what I said on the email, it's 24th. Yeah, if we wait for a couple more council members to get here, and then try to find a way to. I want to object that. So you can bring it back next meeting. I can. I'll just put it on a unfinished business. And then right. back next All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. So my name is uh, Alex Lee. I'm uh, with uh, Parsons. We're a lead consultant uh, for uh, NDOT on a US 31 study uh, that we started uh, last fall of last year. So we've been out about uh, here in Rochester at the high school for two public information meetings back in December or in early June and out about the, uh, the community. So just going to give you a quick update and answer any questions uh, that you may have. And then likewise, I have uh, today, tonight, uh, Jonathan Wallace. He's the uh, NDOT study uh, project manager. So in terms of the Pell study, uh, that's planning environmental linkage, and I'll talk a little bit about that. There's actually four separate studies that are going on within uh, the US 31 corridor, but also the US 30 corridor. So here, in uh, Fulton County, in Miami County, our 31 North study uh, spans about 26 miles, but then we have a South partner, the US 31 South team, that actually goes down to Hamilton County. You see a gap here in Kokomo because the Kokomo bypass has already been approved. Likewise, our study partner uh, to the North and to the West is the 30 West study team, so they actually have uh, Argus <clears throat> just to the North, and then the 30 East, team that goes to the Ohio line and you can see that gap in Fort Wayne because of the bypass that, that's currently there. So four study teams that are going concurrently. So uh, what is uh, PEL? So PEL is a federal process. It's planning environment linkage. It's actually a study prior to uh, a traditional NDOT job. Let's say they're just replacing a bridge they would do a uh, federal process called the National Environmental Policy Act and study the effects of that bridge replacement. Pell, actually, you come in a little bit early, and so you have that collaboration and engagement prior to, uh, like I mentioned, it's a study of, of the 26-mile quarter. So we're looking at, basically, uh, went out to the public last uh, December and asked the public and stakeholders, like, what, what are your concerns around about 31? So, Pell is a collaborative early feedback process, and so we had uh, multiple stakeholders within the community. One of the challenges that we identified early on is the uh, Mennonite Amish community and reaching out. So we have some stakeholders that are uh, engaged uh, with that and um, up north in Ramco, and, and then likewise uh, talking to Harvest Moon, and then uh, the, the uh, grocery store to, uh, the, to the north and west of Fulton, so off of 700. So talking with uh, Rocky Rocky Bridge uh, Discount Grocery, so it's an Amish run grocery. So talking with them, understanding where they're coming from are definitely some of the challenges that we've had. But it is a collaborative process. We're taking a look at the, the data based on the input and public that we've heard. So what have we heard to date? And this, this, is, this board's a little bit dated. This was presented back in June at the public information meeting. But at that point, we had 261 participants, over 170 comments. We probably have probably 40 or 50 more comments since then. Uh, and then, like, I'm sure. 
What's that? All positive, I'm oh, sure. Uh, there's some challenges. Uh, some folks have, and it, uh, I'll identify that in a second. But, but based on some of that, what we've heard is uh, the mobility. So getting across uh, 31, getting up and down 31. For instance, talking with Rochester uh, Fire, talking with Avenatti Volunteer Fire, and likewise to the south, both Macy, Denver, uh, fire station and Mexico fire and understanding what their needs are likewise talking with the schools here Rochester schools what their needs are uh, North Miami schools and what their needs are in terms of getting across and then up and down so that was a large chunk over 55 percent safety concerns we've definitely heard about some of the challenges there and then region-wide statewide mobility a little, a little less than that but for instance, uh, Manel's down in uh, Mexico, the granary down there, talking with that manager, um, you know, they had winter wheat come in in July. So he had, I think, 400 plus trucks coming in. But now he stores it and he's shipping up to southern Michigan for processing, going back up 31. So it's coming in and around 31 and then heading back up. So definitely listening to what their needs are. Uh, some of some of those uh, issues, and then my, likewise uh, economic development, the lesser so, and some other general comments. Based on those comments and, and feedback that we got back from this, from December, November, December uh, to early June, uh, this is what we uh, come up with in terms of some of the needs and purposes of the study. So, taking that vision, you know, that vision. What do they think and what are some of the challenges to what are some of the purposes and needs? So, like I mentioned, safety along the corridor, heard it all along, about safety at intersections. So, also access control issues. Uh, we're a little bit blessed here in our 26 miles in terms of private driveways for both residents and businesses. We identified um, there's 10. Uh, most of them are down uh, in Miami County not up here in the Fulton County area. Uh, likewise, in terms of uh, cross-highway con connectivity, like I said, talking about the schools, so, uh, the EMS, um, and then the safety and mobility, and then going back to that region-wide and statewide mobility. So improve safety, roadway safety in the corridor, meet the mobility needs of residents, businesses, and services in the study area, and then enhance the efficiency uh, and the reliability of 30. We're, we're kind of lucky up here in this in this corner because what we call the level of service or the traffic movement, uh, both existing condition today and in the future, and I have a safety graphic, but in the future, uh, we're still running at what we call uh, A to F uh, level C in the 2045 timeframe. So in the future, it's still pretty free flow. Uh, that being said, it's B to C today. So that being said, the safety analysis, and you probably heard it here, some of the challenges that we have. I'll just show the graphic over this way. Uh, the heat map, uh, the yellow is higher incidence of crashes and the severity of crashes. And so what we see here in Rochester is along the bend here, the higher incidence of crashes. And then likewise, we've seen some further down in Miami, uh, heading towards uh, Mexico and where our study ends at Eel River County Road 300. That being said is what are the next steps is we're taking a look at based on that the purpose of need, I'll go back to that, um, both safety but also mobility. So we're taking a look at those in what we call the universe of alternatives and you have a wide range of, of, of uh, alternatives to satisfy the needs and purposes of the study. And our engineers do take a look at all the ranges, including what we call the no-build. And the no-build is kind of the do-nothing. We're good, we're good, right? And I've heard it within the community, kind of leave us alone, we're okay. So if I have a safety issue right out here, or I have some flooding concerns or some water concerns, I have an access concern. So we've heard the gamut, uh, and that being said is, taking that universe of alternatives and we're gonna whittle it down to a reasonable within to fit that needs and purposes, and then we'll come back out to the public probably within the next month or so, Jonathan, in terms of? Universe, <coughs> universe will be posted on the website in the next month or so, 
then level two will be later. So we'll have now more to find screening from there. And then the, um, the next public information meeting will be next spring, fall, or spring, summer. Spring, summer. So, so in the spring, we'll be back out as we're kind of screening goes down, get input to that, and then finalize the study uh, in the fall of next year. Uh, will something happen in the winter of next year? I'm going to say no because uh, NDOT has to consider those four study priorities, okay, and, and within that study quarter. And then, likewise, as you may or may not know, they queue those up in five year cycles. And so, if we're uh, in 24, uh, you queue it up, uh, then it's earliest is 25, but NDOT will then have to prioritize where the needs are uh, in the greatest period, you know, the greatest based on both Laporte. That, that this district is, but I also have uh, Miami County, which is Fort Wayne District, so I'm kind of split between uh, two districts. For your information, County Road 700, the, our northern limit, has already been planned for fourth quarter of 2027. That will be an overpass. Just to the north of 110 will be an interchange, and then 10 in Argus will also be an interchange. So that will be run, not part of the study, that will be run out of the Laporte district. So Q4 of 2027, just uh, that's something separate that uh, in terms of from an information perspective. That's one of the start of those projects? They, yeah, they're in the planning process right now. And they're, so they're looking to queue that up to actually start uh, those three. And I'm not sure if it's a bundle, uh, but they will be programmed and then pushed. The, the interchange is a J-turn? The interchange is not a day turn. The interchange is like 25 here in Rochester. Right. Uh, so you know, 110 will be an interchange. Uh, 700 overpass, like 14. So the one time we were talking about the J turns, and on New 24, uh, you know, if you end up heading towards Wabash, uh, they've got those the first time dealt with them, and they're they're different. Something to get used to. You have to get used to it, and they're proven to be, j turns are proven to be safer. Um, I was just in Michigan two, three weeks ago, and they ha they have them, they work fairly, very well in terms of, if you know how to use them, and you know what you're looking for, you get used to them kind of like a roundabout. Mm -hmm. So a roundabout, a lot of folks are concerned about roundabouts, and then once you get used to it, uh, then you, you can navigate it, right? Even school buses and semis? Even school buses and semis, and, and, and that's one thing we'll have to take into consideration is also farm equipment. Mm -hmm. So That was going to be my next, my question was because we have some pretty large farm equipment that spans. <laughs> yeah, yeah. At, at least uh, the two lane on one side can easily. Yeah, the sho they're taking the shoulder and part of 30, the, the right right side of 31. I've seen them up and down, you know, over the past, the past year. So that, that has been something that we, we take note and like I said, talking to Manels and what their, their concerns and needs are and talking to Mr. Smith uh, to, to the West here, he came out to the full, full 4-H fair and, and he was saying the amount of trucks that he has it for his farm, you know, uh, does a number in the hundreds and numbers in the thousands. So we've been out in the, out in the community, uh, the Make a Play Festival, we were here, we were at the 4-H there, uh, we definitely were out with the 4-H, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the Farm Bureau, their members, uh, their annual meeting a couple weeks ago. We out down at, uh, at uh, McClure's Orchard, now that they're open and operated, just have the information to talk to the public. And we've had community hours here in Rochester, whether it's at the library down the street, Harvest Moon up, up the way, so, uh, and answering folks and some of their questions and concerns. So, any comments or questions? Yeah, yes, sir. Twice a month. But yeah, we have community hours twice a month, and so yeah, been, we try to split between the two counties. On the website, you got October twenty-first here at the library from two to four, and then November 9th at the library from three to five. Is what it says. Yep. Yep. So that was just updated this this past week. So we're out and about, and then the. McClure's counts as one of the on the southern yeah, side, and then we're going to be down the 14th. at the yeah, and the, and Denver, I think Denver Fire Fire Station. So, so based on the safety diagram that you showed us, uh, is there understanding of what's causing the 
Uh, they're taking a look at the incidents and the type of crashes, uh, side swipes, uh, T-bones, uh, rear end. So then they'll analyze that further. So this was the first sweep of that, that incident, and now we're, the engineers are more in the process of locating the amount and, and the frequency, like you're saying. And so um, talking to some of the uh, public, you know, talked to one gentleman um, at the um, senior center down the street, and he said his car was told two weeks ago because the guy pulled it out in front of him on 31. Right, so as I said, well, I'm glad you're okay, sir. You know, that, that sort of thing. So um, it, it, is a, it is a challenge because of folks that are, they're sitting there wanting to either cross or turn, and their people are impatient, and then they just go, right? So it, it is, and today's society, and then like, likewise in terms of driver inattention also. So it's you. I'm sorry, sorry. It sounds like we're getting an interchange at 110, 25 is already, I mean, it's already there, and then just the overpass at 700, and that's, that's it? Is that it's set, not, or we're still? No, that's not set. Still everything possibly. everything is, is still on the table. Okay. So everything's still on the table. It's nothing that's been set in stone. Uh, that Going back to the universal alternatives, looking at the different intersections and county roads, uh, you know, if you know, the council wants to come up with some recommendations, feel free to, to send them to me. I'll leave, leave a couple of business cards and or you can go online to our website and directly comment into the, to our system. My, well, my question was, the, you were talking about the severity, and one of the areas is um, 31 and old 30, business 31. We've heard is, multiple concerns about that, and that's documented in our, uh, in our and, comment system. And yeah. when you said the fiscal year 2025 for 710 and 110. 2027. Or 2027, sorry. The, um, was that interchange looked at as part of it, or did it not hit the severity level based on the, I'll say the severity of crashes versus some of those other? For it being an overpass, or I'm not, I'm not. Well, for it to, yeah, whether it's a, whether they're looking at making that an overpass or making that an interchange, or. Yeah, I think because of how close 110 is to 700, they wanted 700 to be that overpass. One of the things, uh, I think there have been some incidents with uh, Amish folks on carriages yes. going across yes. 700. So they said that's going to be an overpass. Let them get from mm -hmm. whether it's church and where their homes are. Uh, and then 110 just to the north of that will be an interchange. Okay. Well, I guess, I, yeah, and that makes sense. I was thinking more the about south, the, the old 31. Oh, about the safety aspect. Yeah. And one of the things I think, I think it's uh, there, and they're going to take a look at it a little bit more, is that angle of how old 31 comes in at an angle. Yeah. You can see, you got line of sight on both sides, mm -hmm. but something I'm dealing with that angle at old 31 coming into 31 is yeah. just at a curve scale. Curve south of it. Yeah. 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 It, it's it's where most of the accidents happen, is they're coming northbound. So I think it's just one of those things where there's time of day with sun. I, I, I'm not sure, but. We'll, we're taking a look at that. Questions? No, thank you. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate the opportunity for an update. Thank you. Do you, I, I do have one more question. Oh, yeah. As far as information, I could question. Really, would it be helpful for us to uh, add a link off our website? To uh, yeah, those? definitely. That, 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 that information is, is great. And then likewise, if you want some further like a handheld acrylic stand with the QR code if you have folks coming in and out of uh, here. Uh, I, I was talking to the town of Akron you know, and they were saying that some of their uh, larger folks have are Hispanic and so my stand's in Spanish and they, she mentioned, the, the clerk was mentioning that most of those, those, that population, they pay their water bill in cash mm -hmm. in person. Yeah. So um, having that information right there when they come in, uh, that's, that's a good outreach for us. I can, you know, I'll just, I can make a copy of this. And stick, I'll leave it with my office staff, but I can put a link on our website okay. to your in-dot for Pell site. And Perfect. Can you come, can you connect with, or do you have social media platforms as well? Uh, we have police those. and fire do. I do okay. not have one for the city. Okay. They, uh, the uh, study teams all have them. I think they're all US 30. Yep, so our social media is pretty robust, but the linkage of social media between whether it's a, the town or the Farm Bureau or some of the, the chamber, 
uh, you know, uh, Fedco definitely has, has been a good partner. So, perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. 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 Yeah, we don't have any old business or ordinance ordinances resolutions. Chief Butler. Hey, good evening. For August, uh, structure fires two in the city, one in Rochester Township. Crash fires one in the city. Electrical fires one in Newcastle. Calls for smoke one in the city. Vehicle fires one in Rochester Township. Uh, standby for threat one in the city. Utility pole fires one in the city. Accidents three in the city, one in Rochester Township, one in Richland Township. Plane crash one in the city. Rescue calls one in the city. Medical assist, 24 in the city, 13 in Rochester Township, 3 in Newcastle Township, 1 in Richland Township. Lift assist, 2 in the city, 2 in Rochester Township. Gas leaks, 1 in the city. Service calls, 1 in the city. Cancel calls, 3 in the city, 3 in Rochester Township, 3 in Richland Township, 1 in Henry Township. If my math is correct, that should total 73 and we conducted one drill. Also, would like to report that I think the additional appropriation might be mine. <laughs> yes. Um, I was doing the budget hearing. We, uh, I asked uh, permission to um, increase the low spending uh, for our air packs. Uh, Bobby came out and watched our demo. Um, there was a huge sale that they were having, and I got with Shada. So um, by buying now, which we took delivery this week, we're going to do our bulk inventory by serial number tomorrow. Uh, we saved seventy thousand dollars, so we went from three forty-five to two seventy-five. Um, like I said the money's there; we didn't have to borrow it. We we're taking it out of the bank, so taking it out three months early versus waiting until the first year. And actually, we probably saved more than that because the first year is going to be a price increase on it. So the air packs for discount. The first we got twenty-five packs. 70 bottles, but the first 25 bottles are buy one, get one free to match with the packs. The other 20 bottles are at a discount. We receiving the mass, 40 masks for each individual at no cost and a protection bag to store those masks in. And uh, they're coming to do uh, the fit testing and, and re redo the training um, later on in the next couple weeks. So the additional appropriation is money. Good job, there, Chief. Good job. But um, yeah, and it's actually I just come across the sales kind of on accident. My 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 uh, vendor really wasn't even pushing the issue because we made it clear that we're looking at it for next year. Because well, I didn't want to put extra pressure on it. If you didn't, I said no. We have the money, so um, so we wrote it up. And like I said, they're they're sitting in the station now, so I'm excited about it. So. They'd probably be twice as expensive next year. Oh, well, I don't know about twice, but they're definitely going to get marked up. So, and the fact that I ordered it, it was a, a week and a half turnaround. That's unheard of. I mean, everything's been waiting. Well, we waited eight months for our compressor. So, yeah, I was excited because actually something worked post COVID. <laughs> <laughs> You haven't got a sand squad. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. The car's just. All right, any questions? That concludes my report. Thank you, Chief. Two shots. Uh, for the month of uh, September, or I'm sorry, August, uh, we had 13 accidents. We issued 92 warnings for 61 offenses, 33 case reports, excuse me, 609 calls for service, 36 lockouts. Nine towed vehicles and 19 people incarcerated. And then you have the crimes. They were lodged for uh, domestic battery and possession of meth were the leading charges. Other than that, uh, we've got our, we're still currently going through our hiring process. We had testing on the 9th, I believe it was. We had five show up. We did background investigations on four of those. Two of those are moving on to command staff interview on October 9th. Yep, October 9th. We'll have command staff interviews on the two, and then hopefully they both pass, and we'll take those to board works interviews. Um, other than that, we are 
talked to the Board of Works last week. We're going to trade in our department issued handguns for new ones. These are over 10 years old, the ones that we're carrying now. Uh, some of them are pushing 10,000 rounds down the barrel. So we'll trade these in and get new ones. Same. Uh, we're going to go with Glock 45 MOS. It's a 9 millimeter. Uh, it's optic ready. So, what do you do with the old ones? Barrels? What's that? What do you do with the old ones? We trade them in. They give us credit for trading them in. What's that? I said we could help you with those barrels. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Any questions? Thank you. Thanks. Sure you do. I do? Okay. You do? <laughs> I, <laughs> do. I think it's on the yeah. corner what you told me before the meeting. See that with Mark Levy. Mary's not here. Mary's not here. Mary's not here. here. We just hear it. Thank you, Mike. We just hear it. 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 We um, I'll start with the housing study symposium. They have it a couple weeks ago. Um, 35 people attended. The reports back from the housing people, they were very pleased with uh, the response. They liked it. There was a lot of give and take back and forth at the tables and around the, during the symposium itself. Um, they're very pleased with it. So there's, uh, that's good news. So we're heading toward an ending of that and uh, probably toward the beginning of the new year, we'll start looking at uh, actual construction sites, things like that. Um, there's one small complication I found out tomorrow I'm in Kosciuszko County for a while talking with my counter clerk because they're doing a housing study and somehow their housing study has flowed over into Akron. Yeah, I know, I've got the same question. So uh, that's why we're meeting to see, uh, draw some boundaries and get things fixed. Uh, at this point. Um, so that's that. Um, if you haven't gone out to Black at her park lately, take a trip out and look at the nice fresh paved dirt. It's not, it's been plowed under, it's straightened out and, and whatnot. Uh, I'm not sure when they're going to start laying um, asphalt down for the road and taking care of it. But uh, when I was out there yesterday, um, they were out there working all day long. So um, it's going to be nice to get Blackheart off the agenda, isn't it? Um, so that's definitely underway. The only thing we're doing now is uh, I've got to get the money from the city and the county, get it over to NEPSCO, and they will start laying the, the line out. Uh, I've been talking back and forth emails with them on that, and that's all that is holding that up at this point in time. And then I just came back from Muncie. That's why it's kind of late getting in. Uh, we had a full day of ready to. Uh, it's complicated. They're making changes. Next time I'll have packages for you, outlines, uh, some dates are set concrete, other dates are not. That's what my entire afternoon tomorrow is going to be about. And Peru is uh, working on setting some dates. Um, one of the things that they will be doing in We'll be discussing tomorrow is um, creating some meetings. Um, it's going to be cultural education issues, and uh, those dates will be combined into your package for you. And that's about really all it is at the moment. It's kind of everything's beginning to gel, and I know it's been eight months of well, we're waiting and waiting and waiting. Well, it's building up, so I think next month you'll you'll see it you'll probably break through and we'll be able to start talking dates and things like that. Down the park board, I'll be on the report. Uh, they met September 11th. Uh, Anthony was there for the uh, golf course. They uh, are getting some of the, a lot of their equipment in. They've also had uh, so bees get into some electrical boards in the irrigation uh, system, which I guess was quite the headache. Uh, I didn't know there was electrical boards that ran that whole system out there, but we 
major, uh, kind of a major ordeal. Uh, and then they're also having trouble with the, the new irrigation pump out there, which I believe, I think the conversation is it's still under warranty. So that was good. Uh, Dwayne is still working on the pool is trying, as far as trying to find the leak. He's having some people come in and check that out. Um, there are some trees in the park, in the main park that's, uh, that's been damaged and they've been uh, working on getting those cut out, trimmed up or down. Uh, they have closed down the uh, splash pad. And we also, that group got invited to, and I'm surprised Eric Bittinger's not here, but Arbor Day, uh, September 30th, uh, the tree board, which you're probably going to. So I'll stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any questions? Include the All right. Todd, do you have anything on the solid waste panel? Uh, solid waste, I was not able to make that meeting, so I don't have a report for them. Uh, Animal Center have just updates. For the months of July and August, respectively, they took in 72 and 71 cats each, each of those months and adopted out 78 and 66, so pretty close to what they took in. Uh, the average stay for the cats now is around 40 days. Uh, for dogs, they took in 35 and 29, and that includes puppies. stay for dogs is around 20 days from the last couple of months. So the dogs are being adopted out much more quickly. Uh, finances have been really good for the center. Um, they are down on donations significantly this year, but the grant money has come up. They've been making more money on the vaccine clinic that they run, and they have already almost met their adoption fee budget income-wise already uh, through August. So we've got obviously four more months that they'll be receiving funds for that. So we hope to offset some of the lack of donations. Um, and other than that, that's pretty much it. I will say I just received their request for their second distribution. So okay. they usually they do it late spring, <coughs> that way they don't take their whole distribution at one time, so they split it up, make it easier on their finances. So that'll go out next week. All right, thanks. It's pretty amazing, I forget. 30th, 30th. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Very surprising. Very good. Questions for Tom? And Janet actually has been very creative in finding ways to get pets adopted out. She's actually setting up cages in different pet stores around the region. So in Logansport and Warsaw and Wabash, things like that. Um, Good thing. Yeah. She's still at Smith Farm Store then too. There are those still there too. Well, what do those stores, do they get anything out of that? Or uh, just, I just guess, the PR? Yeah, the PR for it. It's great. They let them set up for nothing. Tree Board EMS, Brian? Tree Board met September 6th. One of the main things was their priority work order for tree at 1309 Main Street that was completed, and the bill has been submitted for that. They're going to be holding off on plan to work through this year because they need to use whatever's remaining in the budget for planting trees. As Bob alluded, the Arbor Day event is set for September 30th at Times Theater, 2 o'clock. The movie, The Lorax, is showing. It is free. Bring your kids, your grandkids, everybody. Go watch it. So, uh, I believe Shana didn't, did Eric post anything for the site or share anything with you or not? Eric Binninger. Yes, he sent, uh, well, actually, he, Jim did. Okay. Jim sent over the flyer for it. I forwarded it to all of our department heads, all the boards and council, 
and uh, and then I was going to print some and have the hanging here in the office as well. So okay. But and ask anybody if they wanted to pass them along to employees. And the uh, oh, Mark wants to know next meeting is October fourth at nine a.m. Basically it. important thing, I guess, is that uh, that big was given to Derek by the board that the uh, meter testing for the two-inch meters was done. The splash pad has been turned off for the year. They used 2,789,900 gallons of water for the year in how many months? Four, was it open? Maybe four months? Five months? That's a lot of that's a lot of water there. Actually, there we're trying to figure out a way to be able to cut that down. Maybe this running too long at certain times, but that was that was a lot of water. It's gone. Yes. Uh, the new main excavator was delivered, and everything's running as normal, which is always the most important thing. There's nobody going on uh, vacation. Derek, you're not here. I couldn't still couldn't believe that. And. Uh, Due to the month of August was done and everything was running fine. Can't ask for any more than that. Any questions? All right, thank you. Ann, did you have anything legal? Uh, just by way of an update, uh, we talked about the uh, potential for black air annexation. any concerns just an update that Randy sent over um, there are going to we have some areas uh, where we did our paving and this is outside of the ADA grant uh, sidewalk grant that we're going to be doing but we will have some small areas over by Zimmerman and down 12th Street that we're going to be doing some replacement of the intersect of the uh, sidewalk intersections and the curbs and the uh, crosswalks where we're going to be laying in some ADA transitions and things like that. So that'll be this fall yet and then we are actually going to be looking at, Randy's already looking at next year's project. Some of these stirred up from uh, resident requests. They're going to be replacing some sidewalks residents are. So whenever a resident replaces a sidewalk, the city's obligation is to maintain the ADA <coughs> portion of that if it's at a corner. Those will be coming up here, um, I'd say in the next month, you'll start seeing, because we got to get it done before concrete freezes. <laughs> so uh, that was the only update Randy passed that on. He brought that into me today um, to share with you guys. Now Zimmerman's, uh, that area, we are replacing some curb along there just because there's existing curbing. So because it's curbing, it's city's responsibility, so we will be replacing that while Zimmerman is replacing their, it's not really a sidewalk, but they have that little two-foot approach in front of their business that they put it in a long time ago to help people so they're not stepping out into grass when they go in for services or anything like that or for viewing. So if they are replacing that, we're just replacing the curbing that butts up against it and then the sidewalk channels. That's it. <laughs> 